Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Today's video features late night knock at the door stories. You know how terrifying that is when you're all safe and sound in your home. You're ready for bed, ready to start another day tomorrow, and someone knocks on your door. Immediately your heart begins to race. All your fears come up to the surface. Will you answer? Will they keep knocking? Story number one. Several years ago, I moved into my first apartment by myself. It was my first time living in a large apartment complex, which was very old and in a relatively known dangerous county right outside a major US city. This event happened one night after work in the winter time so it was already dark outside by the time I parked my car in the large parking lot in front of the complex. I had just turned off my car and was grabbing my purse when I noticed another car with its brights on pull into the spot right next to me. I thought this was odd considering the parking lot was very large and nearly empty and I had parked a fair distance from the entrance of the building. I thought it was a little weird but didn't give it another thought. I got out of my car, pretended not to notice their car, and started walking to my building. Roughly 10 steps later, I heard a car door slam shut, and I briefly glanced behind me to see a very large, older man walking in my direction towards the apartments. Everything felt off, like something was wrong and I was in danger. I remember feeling like my heart dropped into my stomach. My hands felt unsteady. I tried to come out of it by telling myself how irrational I was. There was no reason at all this should make me feel scared. And he was probably just another one of the many tenants here. But I could still not shake that feeling as I kept walking towards my building. I took a few more steps and suddenly I felt like I couldn't breathe. I was panicking so hard. It was like I wasn't even in control of my body and I started to walk faster and faster until I was literally sprinting into the apartment complex and towards the stairwell to make it to the third floor as quickly as possible. My body didn't care that I was freaking out over what seemed like a normal occurrence. It was just urging me to go faster and faster. I made it to my third floor landing before my fears realized and I heard the door to the bottom of the stairwell slam open and bang forcefully against the wall, followed by a sound of someone sprinting up the stairs madly. I ran the remaining feet to my door, which was thankfully just a couple doors down, and started to struggle with my keys. It was like a scene from a horror movie. I was shaking so badly I couldn't get the key in the stupid hole, turning it upside down, right side up and upside down again, not getting it to fit. This whole time I could still hear someone sprinting up the stairs. Big, loud steps that seemed to be, just on the verge of opening the door, just a few feet from me. And my hands just couldn't stop shaking. Finally the key fit, the door flung open, and I shut it immediately followed by deadbolting the door. I was frozen for a good ten seconds. I didn't make any noise in my pitch black apartment, and I certainly didn't hear anything outside. I turned the light onto my apartment and tried to calm myself down. I thought to myself that it was probably just some stupid idiot trying to get home quickly, and that the person in the parking lot may not have even been the same person running up the stairs. Maybe it was just a kid. I just read too many scary stories, right? I was just being paranoid. After 20 minutes I was feeling like an idiot for panicking like I did, but I still could not shake that hair raised on the back of your neck feeling. I started searching the entire apartment and turning on every light to ease my mind. Nothing out of the usual. I then decided to check out the front door just to ease my anxiety, since it seemed to get worse any time I even glanced in that direction, and took a quick look through the peephole. I felt all the air go out of my lungs as I completely froze. 
looking straight back at me was the same man from the parking lot. He was standing just several inches from the door, not looking confused or drunk, but serious and calm with a slight grin on his face, like he was in on a secret. He was standing so still and was just staring at my door. It had to have been at least 25 minutes now since I first made it into my apartment and he must have been standing there the entire time. I was frozen for a good minute before I very, very slowly backed away and locked myself in the bathroom. I panicked and wasn't sure whether to call 911. When I changed my mind last minute and called the local police station instead, since I reasoned I wasn't in imminent danger, it was still in the minds of me over-exaggerating the situation. The station said they would send someone over. I remember staying in the bathroom for at least another 10 minutes, and then getting the courage to look through the peephole again, just to make sure I wasn't imagining things. I wasn't, and he was still standing there, unmoved with the same creepy expression. The police send one guy who didn't show up for over an hour, and by the time he did the man was gone, along with his car. The thing that really gets me is the fact that he stood there for at least half an hour, not making any attempt to knock on the door or walk around the floor. I have no idea what his true intentions were or what made him eventually change his mind and leave. I also hate to think how he knew that this was my apartment. Either I got the door open just in time for him to catch it closing, or he already knew who I was and where I lived. I moved out of the area a few months after this event, but I still feel that fear any time I walk through any major parking lots at night or go into stairwells alone. So creepy man who stared at my door for way too long, let's not meet. Story number two. This just happened today, and I am still terrified. I'd had my first driving lesson today, and I was very worn out after it. I'm also feeling pretty unwell, a bit nauseous as well as a sore throat and a cough. After the driving lesson, I came home, laid on the couch under a cozy blanket, and began practicing some driving theory from apps I downloaded. I was home alone. This means there were no cars in the driveway or in front of my house, and I had the lights on low as my front room receives a lot of light from the large front window. I'd been sitting there for almost two hours, barely moved, when I heard an aggressive knock on the front door. The postman had already been, and we weren't waiting on any packages to be delivered. I also hadn't heard a car pull up. This made me assume it was someone selling something. Recently our village has been somewhat bombarded with charity workers who once finish their spiel tell you that they can't accept cash donations but instead you have to sign up for a direct debit and pay at least 12 euros a month. Being sick and tired and too embarrassed to reject another charity worker I stayed put and hoped they'd leave. They knocked twice more increasingly more loudly than the time before. Eventually I heard them walk down the front steps, so I crept to the front window to peer through and see who it was and where they went, except I couldn't see anybody. I've read enough creepy stories and seen enough scary movies that multiple scenarios wiggled at my mind, but as most people would do, I assumed nothing of it and decided to make myself lunch. I headed through the kitchen which I should mention faces the backyard. We have both a large window and a set of patio doors. The curtains were open on both. I immediately caught something out of the corner of my eye and my vision slid to the window where I saw what looked like the top of someone's head as if they were crouching down as they passed the window. I froze, but I let my eyes follow until I saw a person appear at the patio doors clearly ready to attempt to enter. We made eye contact. He was a tall male, large build, wearing what looked like a track suit with a black jacket on top. As soon as he realized I was home, he bolted. 
I heard him run up the side of my house, so I ran to the front again, where I see him continue to sprint down the street and out of sight. Story number three. This happened to me just last Tuesday, and I can't stop thinking about it. I'll start this story by saying I'm a 30-year-old female who lives with my fiancé and our two dogs. I have two huskies. One is two, and one is four months old. My huskies are not guard dogs to save their lives. They don't bark nor howl. These dogs just love people so much. It's 8 p.m., it's dark out, and I'm home alone. My fiancé is at his weekly hockey game. I'm in the bathroom with the door closed and the blow dryer going, so I can't really hear anything going on around me. That is until I hear one of my dogs howl. I stop the blow dryer and listen, thinking that the dogs are fighting again. Then I heard a faint knock, and the dogs start going ape shit, barking, howling, jumping into the bay window, so hard that I thought they were going to break it. I'm thinking, what the hell is making them go so crazy like that? Maybe a dog or a skunk. I look out my bedroom window, as it was the closest view to the front door for me. Lo and behold, there's two men in hoodies, standing at the front door. They start knocking louder, and this time my two-year-old husky jumps from the bay window to the front door, starts growling and ramming his body into the door. I'm watching this from my bedroom. As the dogs jump into the door, one of the men jumps back startled, looks at the other man, and they slowly walk away. I called my fiancé to get home as soon as possible. I watched them walk slowly away down the road. They weren't selling anything as they didn't stop at any other houses. I was so creeped out and I still am. Thank goodness for my crazy dogs. Scary men at my door. Let's never meet again. Story number four. I am a five foot four female. This story took place one day when I was home alone at night because my parents had gone to grab some things for our home and at one of those stores that runs until midnight. After my parents had left, I started watching some TV and eating the rest of what was left of dinner. Once I got really engrossed in a show, I completely forgot what was going on in the real world. So I was startled when I heard a knock on the door. Thinking that it was my parents who might have decided to come home early, I went and looked through the peephole. What I saw instead of my parents was a man in his late fifties, maybe even early sixties. Now, I decided that I was just going to be brave, so I called through the door and asked if I could help him. My voice is always a bit shaky when answering the door, or even if I'm answering the phone so the man must have known I was scared. He claimed that his phone had died and his wife would be worried if he didn't call back, and if he could just use my phone for one second. There was a part of me that wanted to run and hide, but I decided to be brave and pretend someone other than me was home. I called out to my dad, who of course wasn't home, and said, My dad will take care of it for you, sir. He hastily said, Oh. Never mind, I don't want to trouble you guys any further. I have about 2% on my phone. I'll make the call myself. My heart was still racing, but once again I pretended to call out to my mom and told her he didn't need the phone after all. After he had left, I made sure the doors were locked as tightly as possible, sat down to finish my show. Not even 10 minutes later, there was another knock on the door. This time I was sure it was my parents. So I ran towards the door, but when I looked through the peephole, I saw an old woman around the same age as the man. Now I thought it might have just been someone in my building my mom knew, so I called out and asked if she needed help. After a short pause, the woman claimed that she had hurt her knee, and if she could come in and get some ice. That's when I felt chills run down my body, and I knew for sure I wasn't going to let her in. Some of you might think I was overreacting, but something just seemed so off, so I told her I was going to call the police. She screamed that I was a rude, ungrateful bitch, and that I shouldn't be so rude to a sweet old lady like her. 
After the lady had left, I heard a car start up and take off at a relatively fast speed. After I calmed down, I called my parents and told them the story. And they said they would be home within five minutes. So to all of you, please be careful who you open the door for and question the sympathy stories they tell. Story number one. This happened to me a couple of years ago. It was late May in the evening. I had just finished cleaning up from dinner and it was a nice evening out. I have three big dogs and have to take each of them individually for a walk. My oldest dog is 11 years old and deaf. He is usually the first I walk as he gets tired easily. I grabbed my phone, put my headphones in and headed out the door with my old boxer. I live in a rural area. The houses are quite far apart and set quite far off the road, so I never had to usually worry about running into too many people on my nightly walks. My area is also very safe. Nothing ever happens here. I was about 10 minutes into my walk listening to scary stories on YouTube. Yes, I listen to horror stories as I walk my dogs in the dark when I noticed headlights coming up behind me. I didn't pay much attention, just moved closer to the side of the road, pulled my dog over onto the dirt to stay off the road as a car went by. I kept walking and noticed that even though I saw headlights from behind me, they weren't going past me. I'm female, 35 years old, about 5 foot 4, blonde hair that was up in a ponytail. I had a feeling that I should turn around, and when I did I saw a pickup truck with two people inside pulled off on the side of the road, about 15 feet behind me. I could make out the silhouette of the driver and the passenger, but not their faces. I kept walking thinking they had just pulled over for some reason that had nothing to do with me. Well, I was wrong. About 30 seconds after I turned around to look at the truck, it started slowly creeping along the road behind me. I was getting a little freaked out, but tried to play it off like I didn't care what they were doing and kept on my walk. Please keep in mind my dog is very old and would be of little help to me if these people were to get out of their truck. I started walking a little faster and the truck kept following behind me. About a minute later I decided to turn around and started heading back to my house so I had to walk past the truck. As I turned around, they stopped in the road and didn't move. I was going into full panic mode at this point so I pulled my phone out to call my husband. As I was dialing his number the truck started honking its horn at me and the driver rolled down the window and said, Hey, we're lost, can you help us? I ignored them and kept walking, praying my husband would answer the phone. He was still at work and didn't pick up so I started walking faster. The truck then did a complete turn in the middle of the road, turned its high beams on me and sat there revving its engine over and over. The sound of this made me start running with my old dog, who has a hard time walking quickly as it is. I'm running with my dog, the truck still sitting revving the engine. Then all of a sudden it takes off towards me. My heart is pounding in my ears and the fear and panic I felt in that moment. Indescribable. I can hear the truck flying down the road towards me and they're now honking their horn over and over again. I was still at least five minutes from my house and between me holding on to my dog and running, I dropped my phone somewhere in the dirt on the side of the road. I kept running as fast as I could with my dog, turned my head to see that they were heading straight at me from the road. I grabbed my dog and jumped down into the ditch to narrowly avoid being hit. The truck kept honking as it drove down the road past me and kept on going. I truly thought I was going to end up kidnapped or dead from them hitting me. I was so terrified I pulled my dog into the woods for at least 15 minutes to make sure the truck didn't come back. I finally made it home, absolutely terrified, called my husband from my landline. He was almost home so when I told him what happened, he was very sorry that he didn't pick up when I had called him. I did phone the police when my husband got home. They came out and took a report. I gave them a description of the truck and the man, but they didn't end up finding who they were. 
just a word of advice. Don't walk along dark country roads at night with an old dog and always carry pepper spray or something with you to protect yourself. I never thought something like that would happen to me that close to home. Story number two. I go for a short run every night, right after sundown when it finally cools off. I always take the same route, a loop through a quiet and sparsely populated neighborhood, and I now realize how easy of a target that made me. A short section of the route passes by an unlit park. A couple of weeks ago I'd seen a guy hanging out behind a truck that was parked next to the entrance, and it was so unusual to see someone else up there that I decided to be extra cautious, turn around and head back home. I didn't get close enough to get a good look at his face. A few days later I saw what looked like the same guy by the park again. I figured I was probably just being paranoid, but I decided to turn around again just in case. I hadn't noticed any activity by the park in the last several days, so I resumed my normal route and didn't even think about the guy I'd seen up there before. Then, last night as I was passing by the park, I had this indescribable feeling that I was being watched. I couldn't spot anyone nearby, but the park extends into pitch black darkness, so someone could easily hide there unseen. I decided to keep running, look confident, try to hurry past the park as quickly as I could. Suddenly I smelled a strong wave of cologne in the air. That immediately put me on edge, and I'm pretty damn grateful he was wearing it because it tipped me off. After I smelled it, I had no doubt in my mind that there was someone nearby. Still, I didn't see any movements in front or on either side of me, and I was still too afraid to turn around. Immediately past the park, there's a bend in the road. There's a house on the corner as you turn down the road as well. The house has lots of tall bushes in the front yard. I normally run right past those without even thinking of it, but since my gut instinct was blaring like a siren, I quickly moved to the middle of the street as I rounded the corner. I shot a glance behind me to see if anyone had actually been nearby. I saw a man slowly walking through the front yard of the house on the corner, looking right at me. He paused behind the bushes, as if trying to be hidden. I could see his jeans and a pair of black and white sneakers, but little else. His slow footsteps were so creepy that I can't get the image out of my mind, as if he was trying to be as quiet as he could, like a cat stalking its prey. If I hadn't made the split decision to run into the middle of the street and away from the yard, I would have been within reach. I don't know how I acted so quickly, thanks to adrenaline. I turned on my flashlight on my phone, aimed it right at the bushes hoping it would startle or blind him long enough for me to get some distance between us, and then I started sprinting at full speed down the road. It was probably the fastest I've ever run in my life. At the end of each block I glanced behind me to check if the man was there. Fortunately I lost sight of him. If he decided to sprint after me, I'm not sure what I would have done. From what I could make out, this guy was at least a foot taller than me. By the time I got home, the adrenaline had dissipated, and I was shaking with fear. I couldn't sleep at all last night. What scares me the most about the whole thing is that I'm 99% sure this was the same guy I'd seen hanging out in front of the park recently. I can't shake the idea that he'd been watching me and calculating the right time and path to try to sneak up behind me. He knew that I always ran past there around the same time each night. The thought that he was probably watching me from the darkness in the park last night before quietly moving out of it and starting to follow me makes me sick. Needless to say, I won't be running past the park at night anymore or running alone at night period. The terror I felt when I turned around and saw the guy's shoes slowly behind the bushes and his head facing me is like nothing else I've ever felt before. I live in a small town, the kind where almost everyone knows each other, 
and it also creeps me out to think that this might have been someone I've seen around town in the past. Part of me wishes I could have gotten a better look at his face for the police report. Another part is glad I didn't, since that image would no doubt haunt me. Story number three. I was camping in the middle of nowhere in Washington State near Mount Rainier. Like not an official campground, just way out in the forest where I wouldn't have expected another human for miles. One night I wake up and hear something, open my tent, and there was a guy sitting by where my fire had been, right outside of my tent. Nothing particularly noteworthy about the guy, just a fairly regular looking man just sitting there a couple feet from my tent. No bag or pack or anything with him, just a guy. He saw me open the tent, his eyes got huge like he had just seen a ghost and then he took off. It shook me up pretty badly, but over the next day I managed to put it out of my mind fairly well after writing it off as just some odd occurrence and a guy that was probably high or something and had somehow managed to set up a camp coincidentally not far from mine. Then two days after that, 10 to 15 miles away in a completely different direction, I was sitting by my fire that night and started hearing noises that I got more and more convinced were a person. I called out to them and out of the darkness someone was like, do you know how to get to Bell's Canyon? I said no, I don't even think that's a real place there. They kept talking from just out of my line of vision. I tried to see them with my flashlight but they yelled, aim that away, and kind of spooked and not wanting to piss off a potentially crazy person, I did. After 15 minutes of being very freaked out and them talking and asking completely random questions from the darkness, it sounded like the voice had gotten closer. So I shined my light that way again and it was the same man who was outside my tent two nights before. He had to have followed me almost 15 miles over two days because there's no way he could have just accidentally wound up the same spot as vast as that wilderness is. No possible way. As soon as my light hit him, he took off again. I started to chase him, but didn't want to get lost in the wilderness in the dark, so stopped quickly after probably only 100 to 200 feet away from my tent. This one couldn't be written off, because the only way he could have been in both places is specifically if he was following me. I decided the trip was very over, first thing in the morning, and hiked back out, over three days, constantly doubling back, trying to throw anyone following off my trail, and occasionally hiding and waiting to see if he would come by and follow me again. I really can't describe how terrifying it was to feel like I was being hunted through the woods and to actually have to brainstorm on things I could do to best avoid potentially being murdered. On the first night of hiking out, Twice I heard what sounded like a person walking circles outside my tent, but by the time I mustered up the courage to look, nobody was there. On the second night I heard what I thought was an animal making noises, at first in the distance, but slowly decided sounded more like a human making animal calls. I literally almost cried when I finally got back to my car. The relief was so strong. To this day, probably the most terrifying experience I've ever had. I have no idea who the guy was, or what his intentions were, and no way of getting any explanation, but I really can't articulate just what a terrifying few days it was. Story number four. I grew up on a dead-end road where all five of my neighbors were relatives. I liked to go to my aunt's house behind us, which I could get to one of two ways. I could cut through the pasture separating our properties, or I could walk around on the road that ran beside the field and had woods on the other side. I usually cut through the pasture, but the year before I had walked around through a tick nest and got at least 100 ticks all over my pants. So that is why I chose to take the road on this day. To me at age 9 the road was creepy, it just felt like I was in the middle of nowhere, 
and if something happened, then no one would be nearby to help me. This was in the late 1970s, so obviously cell phones were not a thing. One day, I went to visit my aunt for a few hours. As I was walking back, I was freaked out as usual, but really not expecting anything to actually happen to me. When I was about 40 yards from my house, this part of the road was on a curve, so I couldn't see my house yet. I heard a man whisper from the woods, There's a little girl. My hair stood on end. I screamed and ran as fast as I could, screaming the entire way. Luckily, my dad was at the bottom of the driveway working on something, and he met me in the road in a panic since I was screaming bloody murder. I told him what I heard, so he ran around the curve and was gone for 20 minutes. When he came back, he marched inside and called the police. He said someone had been doing drugs in the woods, and he found evidence they had been hanging out there a lot. The police came and searched around. Nobody was ever found, and they never came back. Thank you guys for watching and listening. I appreciate all the love and support in the comments that you guys show me every single video. It means the world to me. Email your true scary stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com to have your stories featured on an upcoming video. I'll leave my email in the description box below as well. Until I meet you again, stay sinful.